Welcome to Moonlight MVP, a YouTube channel dedicated to trying your side project, prototype, or MVP. How does it work? Uh, you, Moonlighter, send me a link to your project and I review and record it. Uh, each project gets seven minutes to demonstrate the idea or problem, and then I will finish by answering what problem you're attempting to solve, who you're solving it for, and what your solution is. Um, the whole point is I don't know much about the project, so you get to see organic first-time impressions. Uh, in this episode, we have some awesome ep uh, uh, awesome projects. So I'm gonna start with uh, uh, Backspace.eco. Backspace.eco, make your website carbon neutral by removing uh, the website CO2 emissions. No idea what that means. How the hell does a website emit, have emissions? Number two, R2DevOps.io, simplify a developer's life. Don't know what that means either. Uh, number three, pathfinder.fyi. I thought this was interesting. Learn from others and choose a career. I think that's kind of like a, um, um, I think that is kind of like a, um, a Q&A website, maybe um, a Quora. I don't know, we'll get into it. Number four, this one was interesting as well. Hangoutville.com. Uh, connect directly with other people in your city. That sounded interesting. I have no idea what that is. Uh, but I'm excited to try it out. Number five is um, actorly. Actorly uh, is the guessing game of an actor in a movie inspired by Wordle. So uh, uh, we'll be having some fun jumping into that game. Then number six, as normal, I will jump into a Y Combinator directory and we will be finding a company that seems interesting and uh, see what we can find as of the time of this recording. I don't know what that company is, um, but uh, that will be fun. Uh, uh, typically, Y Combinator uh, produces batches of companies uh, in the hundreds every uh, a couple of times a year, and it's always interesting to see what comes out of Y Combinator. Very happy to do that. And then lastly, one I'm very excited about is called Skippy. Uh, this is something that I sourced myself uh, it is an app to skip the line at the gas station and check out with your phone. Uh, be sure to check out that in uh, piece of this episode. Um, it's going to be a, a, an extended, uh, extended amount of time where I actually will record myself going into the gas station, and uh, I'm going to use a couple of cameras to show you what's happening. But very excited about Skippy. And it was at this moment I realized that I think my dog had run away, Henry, uh, which he does regularly. And so we're gonna take a couple of minute diversion. We'll get right back to the show after I find my dog using the uh, Apple AirTag. I don't know what he's up to and where he's going. So give me a second, find my iPhone. Uh, the, the, the little punk runs away uh, and I need to get him the fuck back. So right now I am playing the sound on his collar. Um, and this is my house. Air tag not reachable, fuck. Fuckity fuck fuck. All right, I'm just gonna keep pressing the play. When he gets closer to somebody else that has an iPhone, it like, it will connect through at their iPhone and alarm, press the alarm on his collar. This little bastard, I know he's on a, I definitely think he's like in another subdivision and this is not good because I'm trying to record the fucking episode and little bastard has has run away so let's see oh this is annoying this is annoying I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna pause the recording and then we'll jump back hey, in. Look, look, here he is. Did you run away again? Come here, come here, sit. I don't know if you can hear that. Hold on, let me play. Sit, sit. So I actually have the little air tag. It's right there on a collar. He knows he did a bad thing, so he's embarrassed right now. Sit. Hey. This is, don't get me wrong, this is good content, but you give me a heart attack. All right? Don't do that. So I guess today's episode is 
uh, brought to you by Apple's AirTag. Um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, I appreciate that because that, that happens to me at least once a month. So, all right, back to the episode. This project we have here is backspace.eco. Backspace.eco. So let's go ahead and start that seven minute timer. Uh, make your website carbon neutral. Uh, the easiest way for developers to remove their website's CO2 emissions. What does that mean to have a website that has CO2 emissions? Yearly, the average website emits 2,112 kg CO2. Um, that's like driving from Portugal to South Korea. Interesting. What does this mean on a global scale? If the internet were a country, it would be the seventh most polluting. Okay. How uh, interesting position there. As builders of things and lovers of this World Wide Web, we want to do better. 100 page views at 1.76 G of CO2 each. 12,116 km in the average petrol car. I don't know what these... G's or KM stand for grams and kilo something. How backspace works. Okay. We measure your emissions. Starting is simple. Simply drop two lines of code on your website. Then we tally how much data is transferred on every single visit and measure how many emissions your website produces. Okay. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to test this uh, as well as I would like, but uh, let's continue. So what's this? Resource type emissions. Okay, so this is the files, the JavaScript files, I guess. Okay, now, uh, now what do we do? Remove them through carbon removal projects. Remove them through carbon re removal projects. Okay, do nothing. All CO2 is emitted, carbon offsets, some CO2 is avoided, carbon removal, your CO2 is removed. Remove them from the carbon removal. Okay, so the, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change concluded in 2018 that billions of tons of CO2 a year may need to be captured and buried. Backspace only uses high-impact certified carbon removal technologies that literally remove CO2 emissions from the air, backed by people like Stripe, Shopify, Microsoft, and more. We do not use cheap and ineffective carbon credits or offsets. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, da, 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 Chimeworks. Currently, your CO2 is being removed from Climeworks. You use renewable geothermal energy. Okay. So... And provide insights to help reduce your emissions. Is there a way that I could test this? Estimate your footprint. Oh, okay. Uh, enter your URL. So let's do. I uh, let's do. Um, let's do da, 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 YouTube.com. Enter. Let's see what YouTube is up to. Let's see, establishing connection. I love that you can do the demo right here, starting estimation. I love that I don't have to log in to try this. Estimating, uh, you, I know you're gonna throw YouTube under the bus. I know it. Don't tell me that YouTube isn't emitting the most, all right? Don't tell me that. I wanna see, uh, all right, okay. Every year, your website, YouTube, emits 24.7 kgs of CO2. Is that a lot? You're, that's like charging your phone 3,009 times. Going neutral would cost $5 a month. Price starts at $5. Okay. So does, does YouTube pay that? Is that what that is? Let me try a different one. Um, let me try. I'm working on a project called delegate.space. I'm not trying to plug it here, but it's only one I can think of right now. Oh, no. Let's, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw another uh, another project under the bus. We'll see. Um, we'll see what mine says first. We'll see what mine says. We'll see what mine says. 
am I going to pay 5.3 kg CO2 if monthly visits are 1,000? Oh, so this is if 1,000. That's like charging your phone 644 times. Okay, so I think this is like an estimate of 1,000. Um, uh, okay, so let's... Um, I think we have Savvy. Is it Savvy app? Savvy app, yeah. I'm going to throw SavvyApp.cc in here and see what happens. Savvy app is a project I've previously reviewed. So um, sorry to do this Savvy app, but you know, we, we, we've we got to do it. How do I refresh this? Is there a way to refresh? Can I refresh? Let me refresh. Um, let me, can I just delete this? Boom. Hit enter. I think I messed up that. Hold on. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. All right. Savvy app is a project I reviewed in a previous episode. Go check it out. It's an awesome app where you can save kind of like articles and tweets and stuff um, in one place. And so Savvy app. Oh, okay. Um, so Savvy app is emitting every year. Your website emits 18.5 kg CO2. I don't know what kg is. is that kilogram? I don't know what else it would be if monthly visits are a thousand. So that's like charging your phone 2,247 times. Okay, so this is awesome. Um, I would like to kind of learn more about, so where our badge, how long do I have left? 41 seconds. Where our badge and turn your individual action into a global movement. Ooh, so you're like, um, you're like, oh, what did they, that's a, uh, Oh, the badge, oh, the badge game. What is it? It's like a uh, friendly recyclable. You are like uh, fair trade, free trade. Um, f is it free trade, fair trade? It's like a fair trade badge. When you buy clothes and stuff, it like, you know, it did, wasn't made by like kids in China. Um, interesting. Okay, well, we've got 10 seconds left, so I'm going to stop it there. Um, I really kind of, I like this project. I do. I don't know that I fully understand. Um... Let me just stop that. I don't know that I fully understand everything, but it's interesting enough for me to want to know more. Um, so I will answer the, the three fundamental questions. What problem is it that you are solving? You are solving, I guess, uh, websites emitting CO2. Still not sure how that, like, are you, are you using that as like a, an analogy? Like, I don't know how websites em have emissions. Uh, what, what, where, how do you connect that? But anyway, websites are emitting, ish, uh, uh, emitting CO2, I guess. Um, maybe, maybe it would be like, because it's like the data is on a server somewhere and it takes like energy to run the server. I don't know. Maybe. But that's the problem. Websites emitting CO2. Who has that problem? Um... Website owners, uh, project owners, everyone that own, everyone that has a project on this channel apparently has is emitting uh, CO2. So, like everyone that owns a website, what's your solution? Backspace.eco, um, uh, and uh, I think this is really interesting. I, I, again, I'm not sure I fully get it, but it's really, really interesting. It's it's kind of a um, it's a new it's a different way of looking at the internet and, and and it's it's whether right or wrong you're saying hey the internet is somewhat you're literally saying the internet what did you say it's like the seventh seventh most polluting so you know i i still i still struggle to connect those dots but that might just be my ignorance love the project i love how it's different it's it's a different project it's it's you know um it's creative i love that awesome great stuff thumbs up all right, the next project we have is r2devops.io. Let's start the timer, r2devops.io. So the open source CI CD hub for smooth developments. I don't know what CI CD means. Um, stop wasting time to implement your CI CD. Again, don't know what that means. Use centralized and open source jobs developed by the community and build your GitLab's pipeline in a few clicks. I don't know what GitLab is either. Uh, let me read that again. Build your GitLab's pipeline in a few clicks. 
rely on collaborative resources and take part in their enhancement. Link your own jobs and share them with a the community. Join our force to create the new world of CICD. Explore the hub. Let's do that. Um, jobs. Okay. Search for a job. I don't know what any of this is. Let's come back to that. Okay, the assets of R2 DevOps platform. Find and add a job. Find and add all the jobs you need in the same place. Gain time by using ready to work jobs. Customize these jobs to fit your specific needs. Emphasize security in applying open source tools. Benefit from utter res benefit from utter resources created. What does utter mean? Is that benefit from other resources created by the community? Take advantage of standardized documentation. Focus on your core business. Create your pipeline with R2. R2 answer R2 questions and get your pipeline YAML file in less than two minutes. Again, don't know what that is. Hello, my name is R2. I'm here to help you configure your CSCD pipeline You're using R2 DevOps. My head is always in the cloud and I often forget to secret in my often forget secret in my code. Lucky me, I have a job to prevent it. Do you want to check you haven't pub pushed secrets, passwords, or API keys in your project? Yes, no, I don't know what that means either. Okay, discover jobs. So this is about jobs. Um like maybe developer jobs. So what's this? Jobs added, a ready to use job to lint a project written in Golang. Don't know what that means. Um, right, this is another job. Run on run Ansible playbook to automate dev deployments. Don't know what that means. Okay, best grade. Never write your, okay. Got it, create your own rules. Link the jobs you want from your GitLab repository and use them straight away. Be the master, I still don't move step all right can we try something what what's this uh let's search for a job job let's explore roadmap documentation blog add a job let's add a job okay add a job link a link a job from my own repository contribute directly in the official jobs you won't create an official job you want to create an official job follow the guideline and contribute respecting the r2 devops okay let's try it i want to see if i can create a job I don't really know what I'm doing or how, and uh, it looks like that didn't work. So uh, it happens, it happens. Maybe something went wrong on my end, but I couldn't. Let's try that one more time. Did it? Oh, it worked! Boom. So you got to try stuff twice. Try stuff twice. Now what do I do? Uh, add a job. How to structure a job? Link a job. Contribute a crawler. Contribute into R2 DevOps can mean two things, create or update a job. For both, the process is the same. This page describes how to create a job or update. Uh, da, da, da. Can you just give me like a button? Just give me, just give me like a button that says create job. Um, we order the contribution efficiently. Da, 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 da. Contribute, contributing workflow. I don't have much time left, three minutes. Follow the three simple steps below to contribute efficiently in the hub. You'll see step one, fork. The first step is to create your own copy of R Hub's R2 DevOps Hub repository to be able to work on it before merging the update. I don't know what this means. Go to the project creation. All right, let's go here. Select the group in which you want to create the fork. I don't know what this means either. Checking your browser before accessing GitLab. And I don't know if I have a GitLab account. Do I need a GitHub account? GitLab. I guess I do. Um, well, I'll continue reading this for those that do understand what's happening. Step two, work on your fork. If you want to create a new job, create a job branch for your job and work on it. Make sure that you have an NP NPM installed. More about that here. Install the package, da, 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 da. And then step three, test your job. Before merging into the hub, yep, blah, 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 blah. Step four, merge request. This is all like developer stuff, which I'm sure is great. Um, and then more developer stuff and more developer stuff. Okay, can you give me, um, is there a way I could maybe see, let me just go back to the jobs, because I can't, clearly I can't create a job right now, because uh, I don't know how, but I can peruse, 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 peruse is not a word. I can peruse around uh, jobs Explorer, so Jobs Explorer, oh, this is where I was before, okay. 
So uh, let's click on this. Um, and let's see. Let's see what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what's loading. And we have two minutes left. Come on, R2 DevOps. Something's happening here. Something creative and special, but I don't know what's going on. Install job details. New issue. Okay, you didn't load. Let's go back and see if there was a different one. NPM scripts. Okay, this one loaded. So this, I guess this was this, a ready to use NPM job that runs predefined scripts specified. Don't know what that means. Objective, this job allows users to run several scripts from their package JSON file using NPM. I don't know what that means. How to use it. Make sure that blah, 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 blah. Job details, blah, 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 blah. And then variables, blah, 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 blah. And more mumbo jumbo stuff. Okay, so if I was a developer, I'm sure that would make sense all of that. So I'm guessing this is like created for developers. This is for developers to create jobs and have other developers join the job. Um, and that looks like the seven minutes is up. Okay, I'm gonna try my best without understanding what's happening. Um, uh, what are the three fundamental questions? What problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? And what is your solution? So what problem are you solving? I I'm not sure. So the problem, I'm going to just reread this. Stop wasting time to implement your CI CD. Use centralized and open source jobs developed by the community and build your GitLab pipeline in a few clicks. So whatever that is, is the problem. Wasting time implementing your CI CD. That's the problem. Okay. Who has your problem? Um, I'm guessing developers have your, have this problem. It, it's called R2 DevOps. Uh, and then what is your solution? R2 DevOps. Uh, it's an open source CI CD hub for smooth developments. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just reading what the words tell me to say. And I hope I'm doing a good job for you R2 DevOps because I have a feeling it's something awesome you've built. I just, it's like, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what, what, what I'm doing really. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm, oh, that's cool. Um, what is this? Maybe this can tell me. Okay, so that without oh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna finish on this. Without R2, without R2 DevOps, this mess is happening. And then you do this, and this is happening with R2 Develop DevOps. R2 R2 DevOps. R2 DevOps. R2 R2 Vet R2. Okay, without with. Without, with, I like this visualization. Um, I actually think this is a really cool way to, uh, for like dummies like me that don't really understand what you're saying over here. I can like, what you're communicating to me here with this little funny tool thing is like, hey, bad, good. Not what you want, what you want. Uh, what happens when you don't have it? What happens when you do have it? Bad uh bad environment bad environment stressed out person good environment person happy so um i really like this visualization really like this project great job r2devops.io uh would love to kind of see where this goes and if if i can revisit this with maybe a developer friend and see kind of where the where, where it goes from here um um you know great stuff love it all right, next we have pathfinder.fyi. Pathfinder.fyi, it is um, a website to help choose your career. So let's go ahead and jump in, discover what it takes to enter uh, product management, discover what it takes to enter, it looks like uh, software, discover what it takes to enter hardware. Okay, so this is, um, you somehow discover or figure out what it's like. Search for a career path skill or area of interest. Let's try uh, discover career path. YouTuber. Enter. Nothing for YouTube. Okay. Well, uh, don't blame you there. Skill. Um, cooking. 
Okay, zero results, no big deal. It's 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 an MVP. It's an MVP. I know, I know. All right. Uh, what can we do since the search uh, area of interest? Let's let's your your let la, 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 my words are getting jumbled. Let's just type software because you had. Um, oh, I see. It has like suggestions here. So, software uh, skills. So you do it's careers skills. Okay, let's do software engineer. Okay. Ooh. Okay. A description about the software engineer come career coming soon. Okay, so it has like an overview. And then what's this? So languages, Python, Java, C++, SQL, JavaScript. Okay, so this is this is like a I guess a percentage breakdown of languages. Um, so, and then the next tab says skills, product, software development, testing, communication, agile, customer, security, user analysis, AWS. How are they skills? Look, I know communication is, is a skill. Is agile a skill? I guess, like a if that's a like a, a management theory. Uh, user is that a skill? Interesting. Okay. Degrees. What do we have here? Computer science, 94%. Computer engineering, 19 Electrical engineering, 14%. Um, statistics, 11 Physics, 4 Applied math, 3 um, So I guess that's more than 100%. So I don't really know how statistics work. Let's move on. Education, bachelor's degree, 90%. Master's degree, 38 7% PhD. This is great, though. I like this a lot. Computer software, industries, computer software, IT, internet, financial, marketing, and advertising. Okay, this is cool. So let's go back and choose a different one. Um, uh, what would be another career? Let's say I want to be... A, I want to be a dog trainer. Nope. I'm just going to start typing letters and then click what you show me. Um, um, let's do... I wonder if like this is supposed to be limited to like tech jobs and I'm like dog finder, uh, school teacher. <laughs> uh, let's try school teacher. Let's see. Yeah, teacher. Okay, so maybe I just missed that point. I don't know if it's like limited to tech, like discover what it takes. Like, um, um, yeah, like I said, I don't know if you're supposed to limit it to there. So, but I love, oh, I do love that I can uh, use the platform without creating an account. That's that's awesome. So what's advanced search? Search for keyword. Um, let's, uh, I don't know. How is it? An advanced search, search for a keyword. I don't know. Give me a keyword. Give me a keyword. I don't have a keyword right now. I don't have long enough for this. I don't have two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. All right. Um, subscribe, feedback. Uh, I'll come back here. So let's just click on one of these. Find out what skills are in demand right now. Okay. Want to get updates on new features? Uh, let's click hardware. What does that do? Hardware, okay, description about the hardware areas in tech. Robotics, hardware systems, network operations. Let's do robotics, robotics engineer. Okay, a description about the robotics engineer coming soon. Okay, so we're super early here. No big deal, I love it though. I love it, I want the earlier the better, you know. If you could just like, um, you know, I, I think the channel is supposed to be as early as the idea stage, so I love this. Um, so we have, Kind of just the breakdown of languages again, skills, um, software development, automation, embedded, computer vision, problem solving, um, machine learning, safe. I wonder where this data is being populated from. Like, is it like dummy data? Is it accurate? Um, I want to know where, where the data is coming from. Like, how do we know that 75% um, of people that work as a robotics engineer are computer science. It's true. It's probably true. But how, how do we know? I think somebody that would really want to um, like uh, be a 
you know, an advocate of this platform, they're going to want to be able to say that the data is good and it's coming from a good location. I don't know, though. What does it say? How do you like? How did? Oh, look. <laughs> how do we get this information? The Internet's filled with lots of information. Sometimes it's too much to digest at once. Pathfinder is constantly collecting thousands of job posts within the tech industry to provide you with the most up-to-date data and insights. Okay, so you're getting it from job posts. I just answered my own question. Uh, my next question is what job posts and from where? Uh, I'm guessing some kind of job uh, posting website, um, but I guess uh, I don't really have an opinion. What's the testimonials thing? Okay, so you can add a testimonials. Uh, logos provide logos provided by Clearbit. I don't know what Clearbit is either. So uh, add your own testimonial. So da, 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 da. I am a robotics engineer, of course. We all know this. And this is a Google Doc. Pathfinder, share your experience with the community. Pathfinder is an online tech community platform where we can learn from each other's job experiences. Oh, that would have been. Um, so you say online tech community right there. I that maybe you could put that on the website. Oh, and that is the timer. Let me just kind of finish this. Um, what we won't be shared with anyone. We will email you. The content is posted. Um, let's see. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your data. So is there like an? If I could put maybe a. Is that, am I in the tech community if I'm a YouTuber? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, YouTube. There's nothing on there for me here. Um, what's this? Product. So, solution or sales? Oh, solution engineer, customer support engineer, solutions architect, sales engineer. I don't want to know what any of those are, but I'm going to pretend. I am a solutions engineer, whatever the hell that means. What does that mean? Description is not available. Testimonials. Uh, add your own testimonial. Um, oh, I guess it just takes me back. So what is your email? My email is this. So let's just post that in there next. All right. General question. What is your name? Danny Marlon. The organization name you work for at the organization name you work at for the job experience you want to share Google UCLA Moonlight MVP what org team are you in infra infra team research I am in um, the research division yes I am no let's let's uh, do something like, I am in the um, what department am I in for Moonlight MVP. I am in customer success in this capacity. What's your full official website? Moonlight MVP um, YouTube.com forward slash Moonlight MVP. I think. I don't know. Probably. Hopefully. Uh, next. Which of the following specialties is this job closest to? Data analyst, architect, scientist, data engineer, blah, 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 software engineer, web developer, mobile, full stack, back end, front end, better product designer, product manager, uh, blah, 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 UX designer, quality assurance engineer, game developer, uh, quantitative researcher, AI developer, robotics. Um, I don't software manager. Uh, customer success. Customer success. Which best describes your, you can totally delete this by the way, I'm just filling out what is best describes your role. I am an entrepreneur. All right. Too long, don't, what do you do at your job in less than three sentences? I review uh, side projects. Can you explain what you or your team is currently building and what your role is? Um, building 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 YouTube channel build that's not how you spell building that's how you spell. what's the process of getting this job um, creating the channel what hard skills do you use for the job a video production 
What key things helped you most in getting this job? Um, you can name classes, projects, past experiences. Um, uh, experience, I think. Do you consent to letting Pathfinder post the content you provided from the form to the public? Yes. Yuma won't be. Okay, great. Um, if you want to delete that, you can. I just thought I'd fill it out. This form was created inside the UC Santa Cruz. Interesting. Interesting. Um, all right. So let's uh, go over the time here a little bit, but let's kind of finish out Pathfinder and um, let's, let's ask the three same questions. My Alexa just randomly uh, wanted to interject into this video. Let's ask the three fundamental questions. What problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? What's your solution? What problem are you solving? You are solving the problem of... What are you solving the problem of? I guess it would be uh, career research. So you are considering a career you are considering what it would take to succeed in a career. Maybe it's a bad economy and there's a global pandemic and you want to change career and you need to understand the timeline or the, uh, or the obstacles or the milestones you would need to achieve. Maybe you need to understand a good, to see if your personality or your skills and attributes matches a job. So that's maybe the problem you have. Who has that problem? People that uh, maybe get laid off, people that are in a job that they don't like, people that are in a job where there's not as much career progression. Maybe you don't even have a job yet and you're, you're about to go off to college and before you choose a major, before you choose a major, you kind of want to know what the industry looks like. Um, and what is your solution, pathfinder.fyi? Uh, I really like this project. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here. I think you're still clearly in the very early stages where, you know, you're kind of building the data, I guess, behind the platform, uh, which is probably a monumental task. But in terms of the idea itself, uh, I like it a lot. And I look forward to coming back maybe when there's more data, maybe when, um, maybe where you're a little bit further along. Uh, but so far, love it. Love the name. Uh, and and uh, thanks for submitting. Appreciate it. All right. Next, we have Hangoutville.com. Hangoutville.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. What does that mean? Hangoutville is a platform to connect directly with other people in your city. How it works. Create a post in your city introducing yourself people reply directly to your inbox respond to replies or discard them why this platform hangoutville solves the problem of not knowing much about people in our city we can get to know people in a casual manner without consuming lots of our time often we are surrounded by thousands if not millions of people yet with no quick introduction to them we'll never know if we want to meet them or not hangoutville Solves that by, I love that name by the way. Hangoutville solves that by letting people briefly introduce themselves to their city. Okay. How can I use Hangoutville? Here are some examples to get your mind kicking. Find a piano teacher. Offer to teach guitar. Find collaborators for a project. And of course, make friends. Have fun. What was that thing you wanted to do again? Oh right, do it now while you're still alive and well. Okay, so what do we have on the left? We have Earth, Outer Space, Search for Your City, Discover Hangouts, Music Room, da, 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 whatever that means, Diet, Arizona, Land of Majestic, uh, Big Island. Okay, that's probably some... Okay, so let's... I am in St. Louis. Okay, so... Uh, apparently there's a St. Louis in Michigan. Interesting. Oh, look, and one in France. Um, and one in Canada. What? I thought there was one St. Louis. Maybe that is my ignorance. All right, St. Louis, people at this hangout. No one's here. 
sign in to join this hangout. That's sign in. Sign in with email. Uh, Danny Marlin 2020 at gmail. Boom. Are you going to let me join? No. Enter code from the email. I thought you rejected it. You did not reject it. I just wasn't paying attention. Let's go to my email. Let's go to my email and check the spam. There we go. Look at all this stuff I signed up for. Um, let's see. Hang out, Veal. This is the code. Have fun. Man, you really want me to have fun. I want to have fun too. I want to have fun too. Where are we? Uh, did I lose it? Sign in to join this hangout. Sign in. Boom. Enter the code. So I think I lost this window. Enter your name. Ooh. This is different, Danny. This is different. Add a message. Um, hi, people. Oh, this is like awkward. I have to like, hi, people in St. Louis. I am fun, friendly, and want to hang. It's kind of embarrassing, but that is uh, what I said. Okay. Monkey. I am a monkey. Hi, people in St. Louis. I am fun, friendly, and want to hang out. And it's, for some reason, monkey. Is that like my name? Edit message. Okay, great. Leave hangout. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? If I click on monkey, what happens? Hangoutfield.com says monkey. Is that my name? Is that me? I'm monkey. Interesting. I don't think I'm a monkey, but... Um, uh, did I do something? Lee, edit message. Hi, people in St. Louis. I'm fun, friendly, and want to hang out. My name is... Is Danny. Um, okay, so that edited pretty well. People in this hangout. Apparently, I'm a monkey, but you know, I would, I would, uh, I have, uh, I'd probably refute that, you know. But let's uh, let's move around. What does this do? Messages none. Profile. Your name. Danny. Introduce yourself. I am Danny, uh, uh, a YouTube channel, channeler, channel, a YouTube channel, YouTuber channel. There we go. Great English. Moonlight MV Keith. Your hangouts to St. Louis. Oh, so I, so how can I have multiple hangouts? Oh, what did that? That just updated. Okay, so that just updated from there. Interesting, interesting. That's pretty cool. So this is the profile part. That's why it called me monkey because it didn't have, I guess it didn't have the data. But I, I thought I said my name was Danny in the like sign up thingy. Maybe not, I don't know. How do I save this? Do I need to save this? Have an idea or any other feedback for Hangoutville? Share it. Share an idea to improve it. Um, 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 onboarding. Process could be improved. I don't know. What the fuck do I know? Thank you for the input. You're welcome. We have a minute left. We have a minute left. Is there anything else I can do? What's this? That's my profile. These are my messages. Let's let's can I can I join any other group? Hangouts. Hangouts, Hawaii. Um Tara, always hungry for lu luau plus poke. Who here is from Kua and I always hungry for low low plate? Um, okay. What's this? Ni Nihao, Hawaii? So I guess there's lots of people from Hawaii here. Or my guess is you guys are from Hawaii. That made this. Good for you. Um, I'm going to. Uh, hey, Tara. I, I am Daddy from Moonlight. MVP based in St. Louis. 
and I'm going to stop this because we have run out of time. Um, I'm guessing uh, you guys made this a great job with hang out, hang out, bill, send. Your message has been sent. Okay. Uh, I wonder if it should show it to me here. I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, look, it's here. It went into a message. Hey, Tara. I am Danny from Moonlight MVP based in St. Louis. Great job with Hangout Bill. Sent from Hawaii. Okay. I think I'm from St. Louis, but sure, that's just a minor, minor adjustment bug thing. All right, cool. Back to, uh, back to, back to, back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. Where are the hottest peppers? Okay. So some weird stuff is happening here. So these are the these are the hangouts. Great. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna pause here, um, and ask this myself three questions again. Number one, uh, what problem are you solving? You did tell me what the problem was somewhere in here. So so here we go. So hangout solves the problem of not knowing much about people in our city. There's the problem. Um, who has that problem? People in our city. And then what is your solution? Your solution is hangoutville.com, a place where you can, I guess, add hangouts. And I don't know if they're like live chat channels or if it's message based or if it's really a for. I don't know like what the hangout is. Is it, you know, uh, it is it like really just like messages back and forth? Or is it like you can post other stuff like um, po photos or I don't know where you're going with it, but I really, I really like it. I really like it. So great job, Hangoutville team, uh, wherever you're at. Um, maybe Hawaii, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, look forward to following the progress and uh, thanks for submitting. I wanted to add one more thing. If you're watching this video, help Hangoutville uh, by adding your city. You know, they probably need more users to test. And I think it would be cool if if you were a subscriber, go to hangoutville.com and and send a message or add a message or contribute in some way. Um, but great job once again, team. Okay, next we have actorly, actor, actorly.com. Uh, let's go ahead and restart the timer. Um, and we are... What is this? It's like a um, how to play. Uh, I've been told, uh, I was given a tip that this is like Wordle, which I also don't know how to play. We'll let's try our best. Guess the actor who played in all of these movies. You have eight guesses, so be smart with your choices. If you find an actor from one of the listed movies, the title will be revealed. Oh. Uh, if guest actor's age is dis if guest actor's age is displayed with green background, if it matches with the yellow background, if the difference is less than ten years, and with a red background, if the difference is more than ten years, um, I am so confused. Share your success or defeat. New challenge every day. So, I have to guess the actor. Uh, if you find an actor from one of the listed movies. The title will be revealed. So I need to get the title of one of these movies to give me a guess. I have no idea. The Okay, so um, I might have to cheat here. Twenty. So t they were in a movie in 2021, 2014, 2011, 2007, 2005, 2005, 2002. Okay, so uh, it could be a child actor and they... But I don't know. Let's just guess. Jim. Jim Carrey. Boom. All right. I don't think I've got anything wrong there. Right there, I mean. Uh, what does this say? Uh, Jim Carrey. So it's, it's not Jim Carrey. And I think that means uh, less than 59 years. I don't know. Um... Let's do Brad Pitt. 
Boom. Less than 58 years. I think that's a less than sign. I don't know. Uh, who's like the most famous actor? How can I think about this? How can I think? Um, 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 fuck, they're 2021 though. I have no idea. Uh, who else is a... F uh, Matt Damon. 51 years. So it's less... I think that's saying less than 51 years old. Um, let's choose... So maybe I should choose an, an actor that is young and then younger than I can. So who's a younger actor? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Actors or actresses. I don't know. Um, who did I just watch recently in a movie? I watched Ryan Reynolds in a movie. Is that Ryan, Ryan Reynolds in a movie. So I think that means more than 45 years old. Okay. Um, I think that means I can never remember the right way around of the like the the crocodile things. Okay, so more than forty five. Um, um, uh, maybe I should start using these as clues. So biography, drama, music, drama, fantasy, mystery, action, adventure, drama, adventure, comedy, drama, drama, adventure, comedy, crime, comedy, drama, romance. Oh, what was a comedy drama romance in 2021? There's no way I'm getting this. There is no freaking way I'm getting this. Um, I think that means they're older than 45. Who would be older than 45? Will Smith. I don't know. Will Smith. Um, okay. I'm clearly failing this so bad. So bad. Um, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. I'm definitely not. Okay, so. Uh, one more. Two more guesses. Do I have two more guesses? Okay. So I don't think I got any of the titles. So the, pers the person I was. These guesses. What did it say? Did it say. I guess the actor's age is displayed with green background if it matches with a yellow background if the difference is less than 10 years and with a red background if it's more than 10, oh okay so it's less than 10 years so less than 10 years from on the low end 45 on the high end 54 so it has to be if the difference between 45 and could be 35 and 50 35 and up and 55 down uh, but then I also guessed 54, so it has to be, they have to be within 45 and 55, I think. So, 45 and 55, I've got no titles correct. Um, I have two minutes left. I'm just going to have to go for it. Uh, what, what do we have here? What do we have here? What do we have here? Um, I have no idea how old these... Um, Actors are uh, 7.2 on IMDb. 7.2 movie uh, IMDb. 7.2 movie IMDb and 2021. Let's see if I can cheat. All right. Let's see if I can cheat. Let's see if I can cheat. Um, what was the genre of the... What was the genre of it? Comedy, drama, romance. Comedy, drama... So you're getting... I bet you're getting these. So comedy, drama, romance. Let's look for that. Comedy, drama, sci-fi. Comedy, action, adventure, drama. Action, adventure, comedy. Uh, adventure, comedy, fantasy. Oh, comedy, drama, romance, the French dispatch. Um, what's this? What's this? How oh, these, I bet this is it. I bet this is it. So these are the stars. Here's my guesses. Uh, Benicio del Toro, Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton. Uh, does actors also include females? I don't know if it's actors and actresses or actors is, um, 
like it includes both. And there's the seven minute timer. I'm so sorry. How do I turn this off? Ah, stop attacking me. Okay. So, Benicio del Toro, how old are you? So, I bet I could cheat here. I'm going to cheat because I don't know how to play these games. But how can I cheat? So, this person, I'm sure this data is also coming from IMDb as well. So, 21, 14, 11. Let's see. Um, you have as early as 95, though. So I don't know if you're going to be. How old are you? How old is he? Born in 1967. How old does that make you? I'm guessing it's not him. Who's. Okay, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Um. Let's see what movies Adrian has been in. What movies has Adrian been in? 20, 2002, 2014, or we might have a match. 2002, 2000, oh, we don't have 2005 though. 2014, 2011. I'm going to guess, I still think we're onto something here. We may, I still think we're onto something. If I cheat and get this right, Fuck yeah. But maybe I don't. I can't, can't get too confident. Adrian Brody. Oh my fucking jeez. Jeezy crazy. I am a fucking winner. You have no idea. I don't know how to play Wordle. I've only seen people play it. But I, if, if, if anything, I'm good at cheating. If anything, I'm good at cheating. And I'm going to fucking... I'm so happy right now. I just did that while recording. I'm I'm so happy right now. Um, you know, is cheating good? No, but I'm gonna share it on Twitter because I'm fucking proud of that. Yes, I am. Um, and I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna tweet. Boom. Boom. Yes, I cheated. I cheated. And if you're trying to tell me that people aren't cheating at Wordle, then I don't believe you. There it is. I just I just tweeted right there. Boom. Love it. Love it. I'm so impressed with my ability to cheat. <laughs> All right. Let's get back on track. Back on track. Back on track. Um... There's no way I would have got Adrian Brody. I don't even know who Adrian Brody... Like, I, I, there's just no way. There's no way. Okay. Um, what are the three questions that I should ask? What problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? Uh, what's your solution? What problem are you solving? If you're making a game, the problem is boredom. Uh, as with all entertainment. Who has that problem? Everyone. But if you were to be more specific... Maybe you could say, because it's influenced by Wordle, you could say, this is uh, also, uh, who has this problem? People that play Wordle. What's your solution? Actually, a uh, guess the actor in the movie game, which uh, was really fun and really stressful under time conditions. Um, let me tell you how I cheated, though. I guessed, uh, I guessed that you were getting the, because I knew that you were getting the data from IMDB, I knew that I could probably, through process of elimination, just match, uh, just match the, 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 um, just match the key, the, what, what are they called, the genres, and the years I was a little bit thrown off because I don't think you have all of the data so like how would you if you were to prevent people like me from cheating uh, I guess you can't really prevent anyone from cheating um, but maybe like to get maybe if you wanted to make it easier so that I don't cheat are there things you can do to give us a, a clue I don't know if that's going against like what you're trying to build though I just find this 
I find it very difficult. Um, but let me pause here. I'm going on way too long. Thumbs up. Really fun. Um, if you're watching this video again, you should try uh, try it out. I think they change every day. I'm not sure. So, uh, um, you know, I'd love for people to try out this project and, and uh, I'll certainly be trying it again uh, here tomorrow. Thank you. All right, next we are going to uh, jump into Y Combinator's companies. They did just release a new batch of winter 2022 companies. Uh, so it looks like there are 399, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and filter here and just go through. Um, I do want to filter by the, U the United States for this video. Um, so let's go ahead and filter by um, North America. That brings it to 197. And let's jump through. What's this? Dis decent. Enabling fans to invest in artists and share their success. That looks kind of interesting. Let's check that out. All right, so let's jump into the uh, the Y Combinator copy in the winter 2022 batch. I have found one that looks interesting to me. Uh, Beta.decent.xyz. Uh, let's read through. Don't just stream own. The old system worked for the old system worked by taking rights away from artists. The new system will work by giving them more. Explore amazing releases. Okay, so what's this? Wisdom, trust, forever. Tumblr boys, heartbreak in a metaverse. What does that mean? Uh, explore amazing. Latest releases. So what do we have here? Tumblr boy, heartbreak in the metaverse. So I think there's, is this music? Latest, it has to be music. Um, explore. This is our chance to be more decent to artists by changing how music is monetized in the digital era. Fund the best music, share in its success. So launch musicians, upload tracks, and pick the percentage of royalties that their fans receive. Collect. Artists can release limited editions or, crescendo, or use crescendo. Early fans fund releases and are rewarded with exclusive NSTs. Grow through royalties. Everyone is rewarded for helping the music and artists they love. FAQ. Questions, we got you. Why decent? Why build decent? Artists face significant barriers to entry in the music industry. Our mission is to accelerate artists' growth to help them capture more value from their careers. Just as streaming platforms dem democratize audiences, we aim to democratize ownership and per participation with decent. Uh, how does decent work? Artists commit a percentage of future streaming royalties for a fixed period of time. Artists release NFTs through decent that fans can purchase. Okay. So, um, what do you lock? Why do you lock in royalties? Because it is better to deal for. It's a better deal for both artists. Okay, okay. Uh, what is in it for the artists? Upfront capital and more. Fan base properly incentivized. What is in it for fans? Connect with their favorite artists on a level base. Okay, so let's let's see. Do I? Let's see here. Okay, so I clicked on that and it says page cannot be found. Interesting. Let's click on, can I try the title? Okay, so he's not there. He is not there, bad decisions. Okay, here we go. So, uh, Marty Grimes, bad decisions. 20% for three years. Okay, <clears throat> so Artist info, a budding talent from Berkeley, California, Marty has rapidly become a prominent artist in the Bay Area's rap scene. His music embodies the slang and strut that the region is known for and bringing a new voice to the iconic California lifestyle that bred him. So I guess you can, there's a social profiles, verified artist, release info. So what, so do I just play the music? Do I have to buy the music? I trade on OpenSea, okay. So let's just play this. I hope it doesn't kind of get any strikes. Can you act like you don't know? Go 
Go ahead, give me. Let you break my whole bank. I had too much bros. I'm gonna say you all I want. Play you all my songs. You switch up looks like road. Every time we fuck like the first. Like a bag of my anxiety. Don't wanna let nobody try it. I hide it. Lost inside it when you ride it. I'm driving. Hate to act like we in love, so we fight it. We don't wanna tell nobody. By the way you move your body. Always tryna get it started. Fuck it, let's get it started. Fuck you know how we shopping. But you are made bad decisions. Like a star, I've been wishing. No of you could call it tricking. Okay, so I guess so Marty Grimes uploads his music to Decent and is Decent now like the record label or are you just a platform? Um, it's I see that some these are owners here. I don't really understand like how NFTs work. So if I'm butchering this, my apologies. But it looks like you have some more artists as well. Uh, Harris Cole here. Um, so these are the artist pages. Amanda Francis. Here, um, Amanda Francis is another artist. So, um, what do I do? I ha so trade on OpenSea. So I guess that's a piece of the puzzle. I guess where you're linking to um, the artists. So what do we have? Twenty items, fifteen owners, floor price. So I guess you can buy copies of the song in an NFT form, but I could list. I just listened to the song, so I'm not buying the ability to listen to the song because I just listened to it. I didn't pay you for that. Um, but what would I be buying if I'm buying anything? Is it just I'm buying a rec a, a digital copy of of the record to say that I'm a collector in the music? Um, again, I don't fully understand NFT, so again, if I'm butchering it, sorry, but. It seems like a very interesting kind of cool way of of uh, attacking the, the the music industry. We are running out of time here, so um, let's recap the um, let's recap the the three questions. So, what problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? And what's your solution? So, going back to the kind of the the beginning, uh, what problem are you solving? I guess you're solving the problem of uh, music distribution and sales or selling selling your music um, is the problem is maybe being compensated fairly for your music and then number two would be uh, who has this problem musicians artists and what is your solution your solution is decent.xyz uh, the platform to kind of purchase digital records i guess of of the musician very cool very innovative not sure i fully understand it again as always um but this is maybe this is the future maybe we've stumbled across something uh that even though i don't fully understand it is 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 part of the the kind of the the, the digital uh, revolution that we're going through uh, i'll give a quick shout out to um the founders, if I can find the founders, I guess I can't really, uh, um, I can't really um, find them right now. I guess I can go back to here and do we have uh, the founders listed anywhere? Do we have the founders listed? Oh, here we go. So shout out to, I think these are the founders, Alex Col Alexander Colson, uh, Will Collier, Charlie Durbin and Will Kantaros. Um, big shout out to you guys. Seems like an interesting platform. Would love to see kind of how it progresses from here. All right, for this next project, I'm gonna be using an app called Skippy or Skipped, Skip, Skippy, uh, one of those two. And the what I'm gonna do is I go to the same gas station pretty much every day to get, you know, my energy drinks and 
I happened to uh, mention to one of the cashiers, I can't wait for us to be able to not have to uh, go to the cash register and deal with that whole process. And he happened to say that they had just started using a new app called Skippy or Skip. Um, and that he said that I should check it out. So for the past week, I've actually been using uh, this checkout app and I wanted to kind of use it for a little while so that I could fully understand and immerse myself in, in the, in the kind of the, the, the behavior that happens and kind of the edge cases of what happens. Um, so, uh, got to lots of kind of discussion points here about how it works. Um, and maybe areas of improvement. And there may be some like philosophical questions that we may have to ask. And then also some just like pure logistical questions. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you, I'm going to get my morning uh, monster energy drinks that I do every day. It's a ritual. Um, I don't get my day started without doing it. Um, and uh, I don't feel good about working until I've got my monsters. So uh, let's head to the gas station and uh, let's walk through kind of this. The, I'll walk you through kind of the stages. My local gas station, it's Hux. Um, kind of just a regular gas station like any other. Nothing special. Um, but just so you know what the game plan is, I'm going to go into um, go into the gas station. Uh, the cashier's register is on the right of this door, like over here. And I'm going to go in and go straight to the back, which if you think about it from like the cashier's perspective, they see me do this every day. Um, so this is going to be a pretty normal experience. There's going to be, you know, uh, nothing different on their end. They know what I'm going to do. So, you know, this is this is what it looks like after doing it for like seven days. Um, it's it's honestly nothing kind of crazy, but there's a lot of psychology going on behind the scenes I think is worth talking about. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the GoPro and take it from there. this works is the way this works is so, so what I want to do now is Thank you, it finally worked. See ya. Okay, cool, I just got done uh, picking up my monsters from the gas station. Um, and it just hold on, my road is kind of like a gravel road. This is what you get for living in Missouri on an on a unpaved gravel road. All right. So, a um, couple of things couple of things um first of all i love the app i think it's great i think it's the future um and it really is the past six days has worked really well today i think for some reason it got um it had some kind of glitch in it where i was trying to choose three items and it kept saying default four and i was trying to choose three then i had to like close out of the cart or cancel the cart i closed the app reopened the app and it was like hey you have an active cart do you want to use that yes or no so i had kind of some challenges there um but 
um, let's talk about what did work. So um, I walked in, walked straight to the back of the um, to the back of the uh, store, grabbed my energy drinks and uh, scanned them, and then I uh, added them to my cart. Then I checked out by swiping right. Then um, I what I did do is you check out by swiping right, but then you double tap on the phone um, to like initiate the final uh, transaction. Now, what happens on their end is quite interesting. So um, I don't know if you will see in the camera, but um, they will hear a sound that is unique to the Skip app. So that tells them that I have just checked out and they'll have a little screen that you can't see. They have a little screen that kind of double checks, um, you know, like it will say three monsters, right? And so they can kind of, if they, if they want to, they can kind of look up and see, oh yeah, that's the guy that buys the three monsters, we're good. Um, but there's, there's uh, like I said, I'm gonna preface this with, the, I think this is the future. I do think there are some, some challenges that uh, are worth discussing. Um, there are some challenges worth discussing that, um, let me turn the car off. There are some challenges worth discussing. So, um, Challenge number one is when I go in, the uh, the the first thing I the first challenge I have is because I don't have because I'm not going to the cash register and I'm just checking out with my phone and walking out. Um, they uh, I don't have a bag, so it means I'm kind of walking out. I it's almost like limiting actually what you can buy if you're going to use the Skip app. Maybe the average kind of like ticket price is lower because I can't take out um, more than what I can hold in my hands. Whereas if I took all of the things to the cash register, um, then they would give me a bag and I can leave with a bag. So, um, you know, when I go in there next time, I'm going to remember, oh, yeah, I can't buy lots of things if I want to use the Skip app. So that's that's challenge number one is the bag. Challenge number two is, um, you know, they are hesitant to, I was wondering, and uh, I was wondering if they could maybe put a location where I can pick up a bag myself and uh, self-serve. So they don't need to hand me a bag. I walk into the bag station or I, I, or I, as I go to check out, I like stop by a bag station and put my stuff in a bag. The challenge with that is they are, um, they may uh, not trust that I have, um, that, that I have purchased everything that I've checked out. So maybe, you know, best case scenario, um, you know, maybe I forget an item. I pick up three or four and I put something in my pocket, which I did the other day because I was buying like six items. I had to put one in my pocket bef um, and um, I then took it back out of my pocket and scanned it and checked out. Um, but what if like I forget to do that, right? Does that increase the chances that I'm going to forget to scan items? That's best case. Worst case scenario, what if I just go around, you know, putting a whole bunch of stuff in the bag and, you know, I maybe, um, maybe I like I like pay for one item that's large that is like in the bag and then I steal four, five, six items and when I'm going to check out, I check out on my phone, they hear the noise, they see the bag, they see an item is like, maybe I'm buying a uh, dog food. Um, they're not going to be able to inspect my bag uh, to know that, you know, although I did buy dog food, I am also stealing f seven other items. Um, so from the gas station's perspective, this is still new, right? Their, their staff are still, uh, um, while it's really just me doing it at the gas station, they're kind of observing and learning from my experience. Um, um, so that kind of brings the, that kind of brings into some like philosophical questions about, you know, if you are a staff member at this gas station, this is, this is quite new to you. And this is, you know, uncharted territory when it comes to what exactly, uh, is your role in this, in this engagement, in this transaction? Are you expected to, 
um, just assume that people are going to be honest and scan everything they have and check and leave, right? Um, and are you, if you suspect something isn't right, what exactly are you supposed to, are you supposed to come from behind the cashier's register? Let's say you got three or four people in line. Are you supposed to, if you suspect something has happened, um, like approach that person and say, Hey, can I check what's in your bag? Um, you know, these are, these are hard questions that th these cashiers are going to have to either be trained on, or they're going to have to have clarification, or maybe it's just like, maybe the gas station, they don't see it as going to be a major problem and it's still worth the upgrading technology. Maybe that, you know, theft is still a thing anyway, regardless of whether they use this app. I'm just wondering, like from a management perspective, what kind of training do you go through? Um, what kind of policies are in place? Do you just kind of like you accept that there's going to be a certain percentage of of of, of people stealing items? Um, so the first fundamental question is what role, what philosophical, no, first philosophical question is what role does the cashier have in that transaction? Um, what I, what I noticed the way the app does, the app says, you know, give them a wave on the way out or like display kind of display the items on the way out. And I think that's the app attempting to resolve some of these issues where um, the app is trying to kind of promote that uh, interaction or promote that engagement where we at least lock eyes. Now, I noticed when I first started doing this, I would actually still go up to the cash register and press the checkout on my phone and I would hear the noise and they were new as well. So they were learning, like, is it going to make the noise? Ah, yes, it made the noise. Great. We both succeeded. And so each time I've done it, like each day, I've gotten further and further away from going up to the checkout. Now I'm to the point where I'm about seven days in and I'm pretty much just like walking out and giving them a wave and they're giving me the wave or the yes or the heads up and, and I'm leaving. I'm not going up to the cash register. I'm going straight to the fridge, grabbing my items, scanning them and walking straight out with nothing but a wave. Um, now, I can still see it's kind of clunky. Um, and I think this will just come with time with the adoption. And as as like there's, you know, the gas station is open 24 seven. So, um, you know, there's lots of staff members that have to get used to it and acquainted to it. And, and here's the real thing that happens. Like here's, here's why I wanted to do this for a couple of days before I made a video. Here's what's actually happening. That sound is great. Thumbs up. But what's really happening is they are clocking me as I come in. Like they are seeing me and I'm kind of making like, like half eye contact. Like we know, we, I know that they know that I just walked in the gas station. So in their mind, they probably have 30, 40 seconds to mentally prepare for, okay, I've just seen a regular customer walk in. Um, with, and I know they use the skip app. So I can expect in the next minute or two to hear the skip app sound. And I can expect it within, from the moment I hear that sound, I can expect them to walk out within five to 10 seconds. So like, this is not even something, uh, this is like going to be subliminal stuff, right? This is going to be a well-trained cashier is no one else is going to know, including maybe me, but they are paying attention to, I heard the sound. I can expect to see the guy uh, that buys the monsters. He either will be walking out in the next few seconds, or if I look outside, I'll be seeing him get in the car because maybe I did it. Maybe I checked out right as I, um, you know, maybe I check out while I'm in the aisle. Or maybe I'm running behind and I check out, I'm in a rush, I run out to the car and I check out like as I'm getting in the car, right? So there's still that kind of window of expectation from the cashier's perspective um, and, and they have to kind of connect those dots. Now think about this, they may have three, four, five other people in line when this all goes down. So they they have to like, this is milliseconds, they, they're dealing with somebody, they're checking someone out or answering a question or like doing a scratcher or something, they see kind of someone, gl they glance up, see someone coming in, they see it's me, the guy with the monsters, he does the check, check out app, okay, I can expect, and maybe they deal with three, four, five customers before they hear the sound, so like, to me, this is a great improvement from my experience, I get to just go in, 
scan my items, skip the line. And, and it's happened where there's been a line of four or five people. You know, this is a great experience for me from the merchant side, from the cashier side. Like this is, um, you know, this is the next, uh, um, this is, th this is like, I, this is placing a lot of responsibility on cashiers, if I'm quite frank. And I think this gas station, they're figuring it out. You know, I don't think they're the first gas station to do it, but there's just a lot going on here. Um, there's a, a lot going on. Um, I'm excited about it though, because I think it's, it's, it's such a good idea. It's such a good technology, even with the little glitches. Um, oh, so I'll, I'll finish on like the little glitches. So I think something that is worth noting is um, sometimes like I rarely close the app. So I will check out and then like wave at the person uh, and then I go get in my car, right? Sometimes I won't close the app. And so I think what can happen is the next time I go into the store, the app is a little bit like confuzzled. Uh, and there is a refresh button to like reset the app. But I think what happened to me today was um, there was some something, the app was probably a little bit confused. I added a couple of items to a cart. Um, it it got confused about like, the I was trying to cancel the cart and start again. It got a little confused, but I, I figured it out. Um, what what actually was also happening is when I was canceling out, I know that um, I know that uh, I could hear the machine behind the cashier's register make a different noise. So I'm guessing this is just me speaking out loud. I'm guessing that that noise is to tell them, hey, that cart in that person's phone, they've canceled it. So if they walk out right now with items, you know, maybe it was an accident, maybe it was on purpose, but you need to know that was canceled. But what I did is I started a new cart. I checked out. They probably see, oh, he just checked out with three monsters. And and I left and they didn't stop me. So I'm thinking like most of this will come down to, you know, the, t the technology is there. The technology is awesome. I think most of this is going to come down to their familiarity with the people that are using the app. Whether that's one person right now with me, whether they get used to 15, 20, the same 15, 20 tech savvy people, the early adopters, you know, I still think we're probably five years, seven years away from everyone using the checkout app. Um, but I, 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 you know, that I'll kind of wrap this up here. I've, I've been rambling on forever about this, but um, I got my monsters, Skip, uh, love the app, um, been using it for a while. Uh, very excited about kind of following its journey and, uh, skip, if you want to reach out to, to me and be in an episode and kind of explain, you know, what you're doing on your end and, and, and your journey so far, I would love to do that. Um, but that, that, that ends this, this, uh, this, uh, extended, extended project. Uh, lots of fun. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick, uh, intermission here. If you're watching this video and you like the projects, um, what I want you to do is try the projects yourself and give the, uh, you know, comment on the YouTube channel, things you liked, uh, areas that can be improved. Maybe you can help the, the project owners make it better or, or, or just tell them you like it. I don't know, give them a thumbs up. That's what this YouTube channel was gonna be about is just supporting people making cool shit. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be fully developed. Just, you know, um, people doing uh, cool things, building cool things. And uh, I'm just out here having a beer, editing some of the videos. This episode is uh, sponsored by Blue Moon. Uh, so, you know, thanks for the sponsorship, Blue Moon. And then also, I don't know if you recognize that music, but I'm actually listening to marty which is the artist i found on decent um so there is marty grimes bad decisions decent cheers